Peter, um, in looking at the packet, it doesn't look like we have anything to, to vote on today. Um, and I, we are, I guess we're close to a quorum here in case we do, but we don't have anything yeah, to you, vote on. You, like. you, do have a, you do have a quorum. We just have to uh, vote on the meeting schedule. Nothing, nothing that important. Okay, got it. Great. Um, good. So why don't you give us the uh, latest, greatest uh, condensed development project update, which you've done a pretty significant piece of uh, uh, documentation here. Did you want to go through that? Uh, no, if you have any, anyone has any questions when we get to that, I'd be happy to answer them. But um, the, okay. the most the most noteworthy is we had a group that was um, had an offer on the Masonic building, uh, was going through their due diligence and um, informed us yesterday that the pro forma uh, doesn't play out for the cost and the benefits associated with doing the project. So um, there's a big gap in the in the financing and they've tried to negotiate with the owner but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to go anywhere so maybe when we get under um the um one of the later um agenda items we can we can um talk about um you know our economic development incentive programs um we've also uh continued to be talking to aj with 1000 silas dean highway there's supposedly also a group looking at the um, nursing home on uh, Jordan Lane. I talked to the owner about that and he's uh, in negotiations with somebody. Um, they have not uh, approached us yet with the details on that. So um, we'll keep you posted if that um, starts to go anywhere. Uh, 170 Ridge Road, the apartments up there, uh, we've got a ribbon cutting scheduled for next week. So that project is pretty much uh, completed. Um, when is the ribbon cutting? It is next Thursday. Denise is going to be sending out uh, the details on that. I, it's noon next Thursday, I believe. But Wednesday or Thursday. I don't have it right in front of me, but um, it has to be outside. So hopefully the weather cooperates. But uh, as many of you, we'll, we'll get you the details and hopefully uh, as many of you can join us on that. I got it as uh, Wednesday. Yep. I think that's correct. Yep. Thanks, Peter. And they're looking, Peter, just to let you know, they're looking to do something else with that building already. <laughs> I got it today. I can tell you after. Sure. Which building are you talking about? The, the one you just talked about. They're doing the, the ribbon cutting. Yeah. They, the, rental, the rentals didn't go well. They used all my numbers. They gave it to somebody else. And now it looks like they want to just, uh, they're out. So... Just okay. See what we could do. Wow. <clears throat> Isn't Peter. it early in the game? <laughs> you would think they tried to rent it for the last three months, Judy, and they the, the numbers are just don't match. And we tried to tell them that when so that's why they went with somebody else real estate wise. Now they called me back today. So we'll see. Betty, uh, Peter, anything more worthy of note on development projects? If anyone has any questions on my report, uh, other than that, um, those are the uh, those are those are the no noteworthy uh, things. The only other thing is we met with the uh, owners of the um, auction gallery recently to uh, see what's going on with that, and um, hopefully something will come out of that sooner than later. Uh, Peter, the uh, drive-through restaurant at One Forty Silestein is at the Price Right Plaza. Yeah, it's in the corner where the parking lots all deteriorated. They, they've had several uh, interested um, drive-through tenants. So um, they're go, they're, they just filed an application yesterday. <laughs> they don't give you any idea of who, though? Uh, it is um, Popeye's Chicken. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I hear their sandwiches are delicious. <laughs> yes. Um, and they're doing a lot of advertising here in Connecticut. So uh, I think they're they're... They're popping up everywhere. So there's one in Manchester. I haven't been out there to kind of observe it yet or, or check it out, but uh, we're going to do that shortly. Any questions on uh, Peter put together a very comprehensive list uh, and an update to this. Any other questions on that list? No, it was great though. Yep. Thank you for that, Pete. Um, okay. Self storage moratorium and regulation amendments. Um, Peter and I um, met in front of the PNZ uh, with our proposal. 
Pete, I'll let you kind of give the Reader's Digest version uh, on that. And, um, and I guess we can share uh, also with the modifications that we were talking about in that. That's not included in this, is that correct, in the packet? No, I didn't include the um, revised because we, we didn't have it or we, we're work, still working on those changes. But the, um, we did have the hearing. Uh, it was continued to next Tuesday night. So if anyone wants to uh, follow it up and join the meeting, by all means. Um, we kind of got mixed, um, mixed feedback, I would say, Mark, from the commission. Yep. Um, we, uh, AJ, the uh, owner of 1000 Silas Dean Highway, was on the call, had some very specific, um, specific concerns with the draft uh, and documented those. Uh, basically, he feels that the mixed use and the three-story uh, requirements, I'm trying to remember the term that he used. Um, it won't come to me now, but he uh, was uh, very much opposed to that and tried to convince the commission that those regulations uh, won't fly financially and feasibly for developers, although both Mark and I know there are mi many mixed use projects out there. So uh, in any event, the commission wanted some revisions uh, to the regulations and both Mark and I have been meeting and going, uh, going over those. Um, I guess in a nutshell is uh, we are not going to revise the proposal to eliminate the mixed use and or the three-story requirement. We are uh, probably going to put in some language that would give the commission some flexibility in regards to those requirements, as long as the applicant can demonstrate uh, several additional criteria. Um, uh, so it, it would be an exception that the commission would consider on a case by case basis, but our intent is to keep the uh, concept that the commission had agreed on um, in the in the proposal, and then make some uh, tweaks uh, that would allow the commission, under certain exceptions, to uh, grant them to retrofit an existing building that isn't three stories or cannot accommodate uh, a mixed use type of development. So um, I'm working on those. They'll have to be finalized tomorrow. Once I finalize them, I'll send them out to everybody so you can see uh, some of the changes that uh, we're proposing uh, and we'll see what the commission, the commission has to say. I think the commission members are torn between, for example, 1000 Silas Dean Highway, never having something go in there versus maybe something that isn't quite ideal um, and having the building sit there vacant for another 20 years. So I think they're kind of struggling with how, how uh, stringent should the uh, regulations be um, versus allowing some flexibility to have somebody come in and present a project that might not have all the bells and whistles, but gets the property back on the, uh, uh, in a productive use. I think to, to piggyback on what Pete is saying, um, the guts of the, uh, of the um, proposed language, uh, as you guys know, had significant pieces around the way it would look in the design of it. Um, whereas prior to this, which was no pushback at all from the commission or even um, the owner of 1000 Salestine, um, that um, at the very least, we've got some very specific guidelines on how that would look and feel in that, uh, in that area, which are, are really important. Because prior to this, we had no um, guidelines at all with regards to architectural use or how comfortable it would look to people driving by, which we've got uh, in spades and that. So to be continued um, on that, any questions regarding that? Uh, Peter, uh, I saw in the Hartford Business Journal the other day that uh, they just sold that fitness building in West Hartford and they're gonna convert it to self-storage. Would that have any effect on the requirement needs in the area and the need to build another one here? Uh, the, the, they use like a three mile radius. So I'm not exactly sure if that's within the three mile travel distance um, that would impact our particular market. Um, it potentially could impact, you know, that, that radius. So there's also a project potentially in Berlin um, that might be within the three mile radius. So there are a couple other 
uh, properties out there. The, the self-storage market is incredibly um, attractive to investors, even given the pandemic. So uh, there continues to be uh, clearly some market uh, demand that isn't that isn't being met. The other the other thing is also we've got a group looking at actually building the one that we approved a couple of years ago off of the Berlin Turnpike here in Weathersfield too, which would obviously have a big impact uh, on future market potential. So um, I'm not sure what that break even point is, but yeah, it, it just seems to be potential projects all, all over the, uh, the region, so. Yeah, uh, Peter, I watched uh, the video. I, I you know, was able to spend a few minutes and watch the whole thing. Is it true that, I mean, what did he say? It was like he had 30 some odd potentially interested parties and not one of them ever expressed any kind of interest in a multi-use. Is that correct? Like I'm trying no, to remember what I heard. Not without, without um, you know, divulging too much, that was not an accurate. Okay, that's what summation. I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> and yeah, I, I agree, Marco. I watched it too. And I felt as though he was holding uh, the town of Weathersfield hostage, you know? It's either the way I want it or no way, you know? Yeah. We are addressing that. So I'll be diplomatic here. We are addressing that. And um, so uh, again, stay tuned. Um, any other questions or comments regarding that? Great. Um, we'll go on to the business outreach. If you guys will see in your packet, um, we have a very official looking letter on town of Weathersfield stationery. Um, the Dear Weathersfield business owner letter that you should have got in your packet. Um, it, um, according to Marco Pace, a famous American on the call here, he said, um, what the hell is going on? Let's move forward on this. So we're following uh, his advice. We didn't want his wrath upon us. And uh, um, we believe the letter is done. Um, I think it hits all the high points. Um, I think we're done editing. I'm not going to ask for any edits or comments from you because we want to get it done. Um, uh, we think that it's it's um, it's an easy read. It hits all the all the hot buttons, and uh, we're ready to go on that. Um, Pete, I know that we had asked the um, printing company to be on the call with us last meeting, and he wasn't able to make it. Um, are we still going with that local printer there in town? And what more does he need from us so we can get this into the print shop? The last thing we were waiting for, and they were, I believe, delivered yesterday to his office were the uh, window clings. We didn't have, um, you know, the uh, thousand clings that we needed to give to every uh, recipient. So those, uh, we got noticed yesterday, those arrived at his office. So uh, we're gonna talk to him tomorrow about getting the mailing out next week and um, get them in uh, everybody's hands and um, get this thing um, underway. So. I think it's a good time between the election and between the holiday season so that hopefully we'll get a good uh, a good response. And this will go out in a, a town of Wethersfield envelope, right? It'll have the town of Wethersfield on it. Good. The open rate should be pretty significant, which yep. will be good. Um, and obviously I was a little bit of tongue in cheek there. Does anybody have any comments on the content of the letter? Um, um, any uh, or forever hold your peace. Uh, I, I, oops, go ahead, Judy. Miss Judy? I just think that the uh, shop local or the Weathersfield shopping local should be bigger. I mean, I have my glasses on and it's hard to read. <laughs> um, Is that possible to have that in color? Um, I think it will be in color on the when it goes to print. You might have a black and white printer, but yeah. I think it will be in color in the letter that will go to them. And they're bigger. also going um, but we're also going to be actually enclosing the actual sticker. Uh, for oh, them to excellent. put on their window in there as well. Excellent. So I think okay. that'll help. Yep. <clears throat> excellent. Mr. Pace? Yeah, so my, well, just a quick comment is for the uh, weathersfieldct.gov address that's in there, if that could just be shortened, um, Peter, I don't know if uh, somebody internally can just change that to the weathersfieldct.gov slash business directory. Um, well, you know, a short, a shorter friendly URL. So behind the scenes, it'll still go to that address. Um, but I just something that'll roll off the tongue so people can recognize it. Okay. Yeah. Our, um, unfortunately, Tom Hemphill, our 
our uh, website guy has retired, of course. Uh -oh. um, I so know that. I'll see what um, what other options we have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marco. Any other questions or comments on the uh, business outreach letter? Okay, good. Um, okay, uh, salute to business. So just uh, we are we're plugging along with the award winners um, and explaining to them the uh, interest in having them develop the you know 30 second video. So that's taking a little bit of uh, explanation, uh, shall we say. So uh, we're working through the individual contacts with uh, with uh, all of the award winners. So um, with the intent of giving them. You know, we've ordered the awards and all that kind of stuff. So we're waiting to get the awards, go and meet with them, have them have the awards at the same time as they do the video. So that's all in play right now. Are we, are we using the tribute platform? Is that what we that's decided on people? But we're getting some, there, there's some cost with that, that people have to assume. So uh, Denise was investigating whether we could, you know, pay a, uh, a fee and then be able to share with others so that they can have access to it so um and then other people might just use their own methods shall we say so and then we would have to splice it all together so okay okay um I, i've used that a couple of times on, i've been invited to use it a couple of times it didn't cost me anything to use it i yeah, thought so it was maybe, you were, maybe when you if we send the invite out and we pay then you don't have to Okay. Pay for it. How, uh, so, so the payment of it, I mean, it's not that expensive. That's really no. not an issue, right? No, we would it's cover. Not a, it's not a. It's not a big ticket item, but it is something you. You know, you're giving people an award, and then you're kind of. Right. We yeah. don't. We want to get around them paying for it, right? Right. Okay. All right. Any questions on salute to business and where we are on that? We did, okay. we did book the uh, country club for next year under the assumption that all of this will pass. So hopefully we'll be back to an in-person next year. Um, from your lips to God's ears. Yep. Um, great, thank you, Pete. Um, the town guide and calendar under new business. So for those of you who are uh, responsible for your sections, your pieces, your statements, please get those to us uh, as soon as you can um, so we can get some of that stuff out of the way and not be scrambling uh, in uh, towards the end of next month. So um, if you need copies of um, last year's statements, particularly the mayor and Mark, please let me know um, and you can make the appropriate uh, edits. I was just going to put uh, 2020 sucked. I was just going to just, that was all I was going to put in it and keep it very concise. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Pete, I probably got it somewhere. If you could send the, uh, uh, the word doc from last year, I will get on that this, uh, this week or, or this weekend. Okay. I will too. And I concur. 2020 has not been good. <laughs> As a mayor, you can't say sucked. So that was very, <laughs> I, I agree. Um, Not gonna do any of my write-ups and uh, I will say 2020 has sucked. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a quorum. We could just take a vote on that. Does anybody wanna make a motion? I'll make the motion for sure. Yeah. I'll amen. second it. Yeah. All right, all those in favor that suck, please say aye. <laughs> aye. aye. Just aye. be careful, it's not over yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That comes from an infection uh, disease yeah, nurse. Infection Thanks, control, Judy. yeah. Just, just wait until I give you my report, Judy. All right. Uh, business incentive programs. So I sent out a yesterday a supplemental document that was just simply a an inventory of what I could glean from um, various communities in the Hartford metro area, but also outside of the uh, metro area. So uh, as more and more time goes by, uh, we realize that these vacant properties that we have in town are gonna take more um, effort than um, maybe we've been 
been able to put towards them to see something happen. As I mentioned uh, at the outset of the meeting, the Masonic building deal uh, has just fallen apart uh, because of the numbers. Um, and uh, we really, and, that, and they were factoring in our facade program, just so you know, uh, to the full 50,000. So they were utilizing you know, what we can offer uh, to the extent that they could. I think they were also looking at the CPACE program and I'm not sure about the tax incentive program, but, but they were li basically looking at two of the three programs that we presently offer to try and uh, make the deal work. And even those uh, did not uh, help to make that deal uh, happen. So uh, we're back to square one. There are numerous parties looking at uh, that property. So maybe something else is gonna give, but nevertheless, I imagine they will also come to a similar conclusion uh, about those numbers. So um, we've also talked uh, a while back about revisiting our tax incentive program. We need to make some changes to that. And uh, I'm finding how other towns are doing their program. So we probably need to have a, a bigger conversation about what we're doing and uh, what other towns are doing uh, to attract uh, economic development. So I provided you with just a quick listing and summary of uh, a number of towns nearby and farther away uh, and so that you get an idea of what other communities uh, are offering. Um, obviously, the bigger cities um, benefit from uh, a number of state and federal programs that we are not eligible for. Most of them focus in on targeting, you know, low to moderate income uh, areas of the community, and they can access funds that we cannot uh, necessarily uh, access. But others are putting together, you know, some new creative uh, programs, and they probably need to investigate where they're getting the resources to do that. But nevertheless, many communities, as you can see on the list, offer some things that it might be worth us uh, investigating and then talking about uh, what we can do to, to bring maybe some new programs uh, online, specifically um, to target, you know, some of our, our white elephant properties, uh, but also to, you know, maybe assist uh, our existing businesses at the same time to a lesser, maybe to a lesser extent financially. So I just wanted to get you that list, give you an idea uh, of what is out there in other communities and then start that conversation to see if there's some things we wanna discuss uh, and then maybe at some point bring to the attention of the town council for another level of discussion. Peter, I found your uh, listing interesting in that our neighbors in Newington and Glastonbury who have a lot of commercial property offer no incentives I don't see Rocky Hill on there. Are they in a similar boat offering nothing to, or they never got back to you? I thought I put Rocky Hill in here. I did research them. They have, um, they do have some programs. So I must not have uh, added them to the list. They do have a, uh, or they had a facade program. I believe they have a tax incentive program. That may be the extent of what Rocky Hill offers, but they do have some things. I know that. I'll make a note on that. Okay, thanks. Pete, do the potential developers at Masonic, did they um, look at the um, historical credit? I forget the name of the- um, um, Historic tax credit program. Yeah. I, I did, uh, I gave them all of that information and pointed them in that direction. So they they offered to uh, share with me their pro forma. So I may uh, get a copy of that and do a, uh, do a uh, an analysis of what they did factor in and what they were looking to do and if uh, if that helped or not. Well, I think um, getting an itemization of that um, would be really helpful because um, if they were thoughtful in, in what they listed, and I think I saw something on that at one, somewhere in the last couple of days, um, yep. it, if, if it's legitimate stuff and there's no fluff in there, it would be good ammunition for us to be able to have to talk to either the owner or, you know, because again, it's a numbers thing. I think the, the everybody was willing, but it looked like they were, you know, they were off to a point where it was going to be really uncomfortable for the developer. Um, and this is, 
you know, I, I will just go on record and saying, you know, we need to focus our efforts on um, projects that we can, that we, that can be feasible. Um, you know, we struggle with um, issues at, you know, um, on other properties in town where the pricing we've been told by professionals is not necessarily uh, a number that would be a legitimately attractive number to get a developer involved. Um, so these are just things for us to think about from the RDA perspective and EDIC is, you know, if, if we don't have kind of a come to Jesus moment um, uh, with, with um, some of these people, we, you know, how much time do we really want to focus on these if we can't, if you just can't make numbers work. Um, so that's just my two cents. Can I ask um, what the project uh, was? Was it uh, residential? Was it uh, business? What was the? I was a mixed use combination of commercial business and residential. Any other questions on the uh, business incentive programs and any, any other discussion on that? Okay, guys, thank you. Um, Pete, you've got the 2014 STEEP award listed here. I know why, I'll let you chat. Sure, so, um, and I'll maybe let the town manager uh, chime in in terms of the latest, but this is our, um, basically our $200,000 pot of money that we had earmarked for 1000 Silestine Highway. Obviously the money's now been sitting there for five or six years, depending on how you do the math. Uh, we did receive some um, correspondence from the state, basically uh, alerting uh, us to the fact that the money uh, and the grant uh, is technically way beyond its uh, expiration date and has not been used. And they wanted a report from us as to where we're at and wh what we plan to do. Uh, so I informed uh, Mr. Funaro of that uh, concern. Um, and um, I'll, let, I'll let Gary maybe jump in here and tell us if there's anything more specific from the state that we need to factor into this conversation. I'm trying to think if I touched upon this last time and I apologize if I'm repeating myself. Yeah, I mean, Peter, that's a good summary. Um, the last round of funding that came out for STEEP, we were ineligible to apply for because we had some outstanding um, STEEP funds, particularly or specifically this particular project. Um, you know, my personal opinion is if um, in conversations with the state, if this is going to hold up or be a barrier for us to get additional funding, uh, the state's comment was you may want to consider um, other um, projects or properties. Of course, you'd have to go through a, a process with the OPM for approval to reallocate the funding for another economic development that meets the same intent. Um, but essentially, uh, you know, they're looking at a recapture provision so they can sweep the money back, which means we won't get a chance to use it. Um, and in the meantime, while it's sitting out there we're looking at an issue with um, with not being able to apply for additional funding. So we really have to consider as a as an organization, the EDIC as well as the town, whether or not we want to um, lose this money or lose this opportunity um, uh, to move things forward. Um, and just you know, Pete, the conversation or the report that you just gave, um, if there's opportunities to redesignate it. The problem is it can't just be, well, we're gonna move it over here. We need a project. It's gotta be a project because if we're gonna ask for an extension, um, it's gotta be specific. It's gotta be, um, you know, we have to show there's a pro forma, there's a need um, and there's an impact. Um, otherwise we're basically looking to give the money back. Not, not by choice, but because we have no choice. Can we use that money to buy the Masonic Hall or at least partially make partially purchase the Masonic Hall? It does the uh, that 200,000 doesn't come close to the right. price they're asking. So Right, but if there was some sort of a community investment as well, is that something that 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 we could do with it? You would you or would ask to be done with it? To be most competitive or to get the OPM to consider it, they're probably not going to let you just acquire it to sit on it. They're going to want to see a development purpose. So if you if you partnered with someone who said, look, I've got 200,000 I can put towards it and another X towards the redevelopment, 
you know, the, so they, they look at a, a funding stack, right? So these are all the different funding sources that I have going into this development project. If we were in the mix for a pro forma, you could probably do that. Um, if you're talking about the town or even the RDA purchasing it and, you know, we'd be a bona fide purchaser um, so that we could then transfer. I mean, I've structured deals like that before, um, but 200,000 is probably not significant enough. You would have to have an end use uh, and then you might get yourself in a jam because you've uh, acquired a property that doesn't pencil out and then the taxpayers are sitting on it. So you gotta be careful. Uh, Gary and uh, Peter, how, how serious do you think the uh, person is, is talking to Jordan Lane about the uh, Mediplex building? You know, if, if we offer him a carrot and say, we've got this money, if we give it to you towards your project, it'll move them along quicker and we can get it done and not lose the money and use it for a project, get something done and then look for more money in the future? I think it certainly would be um, a nice uh, offer However, given the scale of that project versus some of the others that I'm thinking about, it may not have the impact, um, you know, that a smaller project would have on a smaller project. So, um, but yeah, I think um, this is a serious uh, concern. The money's been sitting there for a long, long period of time. And um, I would hate to have it swept back by the state uh, if we had an option. You know, I, I was thinking about whether we go to the Masonic guys and, uh, but I don't, you know, the, 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 it's the state. So they're looking at, you know, job creation and some other things and the Masonic project probably is not gonna, you know, hit those, uh, hit, hit any, any numbers for real employment, whereas maybe some other projects. Uh, so I, I, so I, we're just bringing this to everyone's attention to get some feedback. If uh, folks are interested in us pursuing, getting um, some additional time and at the same time, uh, being able to look to partner on other projects rather than have it solely sitting there for for 1000 Silas Dean Highway. Is it do we have to spend it all and I guess Gary do we have to uh, does it have to all the 200,000 be spent or is it a portion that can be spent just to keep it in in play? Right now they're looking for a close out so they want to oh. close out the project. However, if we make a significant sales pitch to OPM, we could probably get an extension. Um, but the state budget, the way the state budget is right now, and this is not uncommon, I've seen it in other years and other uh, programs and projects, they try to sweep money at the end. Um, this year, I think just speaking to the powers that be, this year is uh, obviously very concerning because of how much went out with COVID and what revenues look like for them this year. Um, that, you know, we'd have to make a significant pitch and argument. We have some time, but we don't have a lot and the clock ticks very quickly. So, um, you know, we, we really want to consider what our other options are before we lose access to the funding. Gary, did they give you an actual date where they're, they're saying it, come, it comes back to us on this date or is it kind of TBD, TBD at this point? October 30th, 2020. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So I had a conversation with them. Luckily for me, I tried reaching out to them several times prior to October 30th and never got contact back. So I kind of played that card. Like, you can't take the money away from me if you didn't answer my questions. Yeah. Um, and they obviously, they're dealing with the same thing everyone else is dealing with. They have limited staffing um, to begin with and then add COVID and everything else. So they were apologetic um, for not responding and gave us a little leeway, but they're, you know, they're looking for a response. Um, as I said to Peter previously, I, you know, I, we can, and I don't want to make this sound flippant or that I'm ignoring the state, but we can, we can build some time in there, but we have to show real progress. Sorry, that we're showing real progress to do something with the money, like a real due diligent effort or diligent effort to do something. And then we're just going to put it, I've done these pitches before. We're going to do the pitch to them as to how we're going to reallocate it. But I we don't want to wait too long because they will, you know, January 2 second comes along and we don't have a proposal in front of them that makes them feel warm and fuzzy. They could just say it's doesn't, it's not, it's a drawdown. So it's money's just not there. You know what I mean? How much do we have in a house right now for the facade improvement? 
fifty thousand was promised to the um, uh, Masonic, but after that, do we have any other funds? If um, if we gave the fifty to the Masonic, um, well, they haven't applied yet, but they've just used that as a as a as yeah, part of their financial right. analysis. Right. We would only have, you know, maybe twenty five. Uh, plus or minus left in the in the facade funding. Um, so what if, if what if uh, there was another business that wanted to use, uh, I mean, maybe the 50 for um, a facade improvement, that would mean that we have two potential um, facade improvements that could make us go into that 200,000. And perhaps that would um, One of the things, Judy, is, is the 200,000 is just sitting in that, it's just being right. stored there, housed there, but you bring up a point that I was going to, I was going to ask, and that's what I thought maybe you were going as well was, is because we've been very successful, Pete, with the steep grants that we've got in the past for facade improvement, you know, can part of our pitch be, you know, that's been a really critical part of our, of our town, it's been utilized well, can we take that 200,000? and make that facade improvement money. I, I think if we did, we would have to have some projects, you know, in the queue waiting for that funding so that we can actually spend it. Right now I don't, um, but that doesn't mean we couldn't probably argue that we've got a couple coming in, you know, the pipeline, but I don't have any right at this minute that I can actually specifically say, you know, they're gonna use it right away. So. Um, but then again, we don't also have another economic development project that we could partner with. So I think we'll have to be creative um, in either scenario. Uh, when we get when we get the uh, for the steep grants, how much have they been to fuel our facade improvement? What were the, what were the dollar amounts? Uh, we've received two hundred and fifty here. Another we've uh, another two hundred there. And so it's been different amounts over the various years. So, but it's added up to a substantial, I think it's about 700,000 maybe or, or more from the, from the state for our facade program. This grant actually is titled Facade Improvement Program. We just earmarked 200 of it towards uh, uh, 1000 Silestine Highway. So that would probably be the, the easiest reprogramming scenario, however, we don't have the projects that are going to take the money right away. So, um, well, if we take if we take it if we can get them to see that this could be uh, funds that we can use for a facade improvement. Every time we've gotten two hundred or two fifty, we didn't have a bunch of businesses lined up to use the money. Um, we just businesses did come up and we did use the money. So I'm wondering if it's the same thing. Go look, you guys weren't able to fund our most popular economic program that we have. Can we repurpose this 200,000 for facade improvement? Um, and it fits in line with other amounts that they've given us. If it's been 200 or 250, that might be, you know, one of the things that Gary wants to put in his bag of tricks. But to me, that would be the most natural way uh, to get it, especially if it is labeled. I didn't know that it was labeled facade improvement. Um, and, and so anyway, that's just um, an idea that I think maybe we should explore a little bit. And perhaps we should reach out to anybody, any business that we think might in the future want to do a facade improvement and encourage them to apply, you know, or to start the process so yeah. that we can say to the state, we have these other uh, projects that are, we're hoping to move forward. Yeah, we could explain to the state, we're doing a business mailing, yep. we're reaching out yep. to the entire business community, and we are hoping that that might generate. So I'm sure we could craft a, a good, um, a good argument for that. Peter, do you think um, I'm, I'm basically screwing myself into a piece of wood by saying this, but do we want to take our business owner letter and maybe find a edit something and get a small space in that letter to say, that we do have facade improvement available. That way we can be on record that we shared this with the business community, maybe use this as exhibit A whenever we go back to um, um, OPM. Probably wouldn't hurt. 
it would be a we can make a minor 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 edit to refer to our financial assistance programs in general. All right, why don't we take but a look especially, at that? Especially especially facade improvement if that's what the steep grant is. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on this? Great. Um, this is an easy one. We have Pete's provided our 2021 meeting schedule um, starting with January through January. And again, let's hope those are beautiful non COVID months. Um, um, can we make a motion to uh, approve this schedule? So moved. Do we have second. a second? I'll second. Tom, I think you seconded it. Thank you. <clears throat> I did. Uh, any questions or comments on it? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Mark, before you go into the um, reports, I think we have two um, guests um, re in regards to our correspondence. So if maybe you wanted to jump into those before we, uh, and then they can um, enjoy the rest of their day maybe. Um, are you saying that they're not enjoying this so far, Peter? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't dare speak for our guests, so. Um, uh, Cindy, um, it's nice to have you on the call. Um, you guys, as you know, a month, I think at the last meeting of the previous meeting, I asked Pete to share with you um, some of the um, work uh, that Cindy has done. And we also have Mr. D'Amico with us as well. Gabe, are you uh, the 805 phone number, I assume? I'm uh, I'm the 912 Silas Dean Highway. Oh, okay, um, great. Um, the uh, what I wanted to do is one. Um, it's it's I've read through it several times, and I think there's some interesting um, items here for discussion. Cindy, if you wanted to just share a few minutes uh, with you, uh, Peter, is that okay for public comment at this point? Yeah, definitely. You just uh, yeah yeah. Um, so Cindy, just uh, give us your name and your address. And um, if you'd like to share with us um, your um, inspiration for uh, getting us this, this information, that would be great. Um, I'm Cindy Jacobs. I live at uh, 71 Sunrise Terrace here in Wethersfield. I've been a town resident since uh, 1985. Uh, yeah, 1985. Uh, so I, and I was a member of the EDIC um, the early years of 2000 when Bonnie uh, Therian was uh, the town manager, and Peter was there. Uh, so uh, I, I'll try to uh, limit myself to five minutes. I, I think I can do this. Um, th I have two recommendations. One is to facilitate outdoor dining, and I actually think that might fit in really nicely uh, with the um, possible uses for uh, the $200,000 steep money if we can have an outreach to uh, restaurant owners in town um, to um, what I'd like to see is um, a coordination with planning and zoning to develop a simplified application process for restaurant owners to apply for zoning variances, uh, an extension of dining into parking areas. And that would require flexibility uh, by planning and zoning. Um, so it may take away adjacent parking spaces. And so um, I, I don't think we should look at parking spaces as kind of a very, fixed uh, entity. Um, um, this could be coupled with an, uh, an effort to, for outreach to restaurants uh, together with, again, the facade improvements monies uh, to try to have some kind of simplified messaging. Um, if you have an interest in uh, uh, outdoor dining, umbrellas, tables, uh, barriers for cars, um, we can help kind of thing. I think the uh, the wooden tap in Rocky Hill is just a uh, you know complete success story and something we need to think um, like emulating. Um, it did take away I don't know four or five parking spaces, but there were others. People accommodated and they got a lot of business that way. And I'll say that they also got um, news coverage and so on. Uh, so I'm thinking the Buffalo Wild Wings. There's really a lot of um, parking space in that area. I will say I know the mother of the manager of Buffalo Wild Wings and she mentioned part of the business model is the sort of indoor experience because there's all these sports channels and all of that. They may not work. They may not uh, take it up. 
Uh, but Vito's, um, last I checked, there was one tiny little table there. And it, I, we, we, shot, we, we, we were, were regular customers before the pandemic. We do not eat inside. So we do regular takeout, but I will not eat at that tiny little table. Uh, so, I mean, if we could, you know, and the same is true for the Max Deli. So maybe we need to rethink that. Maybe people can walk a little distance and uh, you could have sort of a, a way that people can walk across a designated area for pedestrians. They can park on the other side, you know, where the empty uh, uh, um, commercial space is. Uh, similar with Chipotle. So um, after the pandemic, uh, uh, guidance suggests that we may well be into this in the spring and the summer, but even after the pandemic, there will be spillover benefits you know, to the vitality, commercial vitality of the uh, Silestine Highway. So that's my piece on that. Um, I want, uh, do I still have time? Sure. Okay. So uh, for the Silestine improvements, um, again, I was um, a member of this committee um, in the early kind of as the facade committee was still just getting started. And, uh, you know, um, uh, a decade or, or more past, um, you know, I can see successes in terms of redevelopment of facade and facade improvements. So I think it's kind of a way to build on this. Uh, what I mentioned in my, uh, my recommendation was a committee, but really what we need is a plan. Um, so we need to really kind of have experts around to uh, kind of develop a concept for the, the Silas Dean Highway. I know there was a plan in 1987 and they had some, I think, general recommendations, but I think we need to have a committee or, um, you know, a general um, public involvement and, uh, and to uh, have uh, landscape or uh, urban developers work on that plan. Uh, my, one of my questions I raise is why do we need why is such a need for speed? I mean, there's, it's a three mile corridor. So if a, if a car is going 30 miles an hour versus 38 miles an hour, it's not gonna make that much difference uh, in terms of uh, you know, how long it takes to get from one end to the, of the Silas Dean to the other. Uh, one way to do it is to consider, and we were at four lanes, and then somewhere in the early 2000s uh, or late 1900s, 90s, uh, we went from four lanes to five lanes. Uh, I think we should really think about four lanes again. Uh, and the model is Glastonbury, Silestine to the south of us and Rocky Hill is four lanes. So that just the fact that motorists will be turning left, that's gonna slow down traffic. And that will give us an, a, an ability to recapture the green space along the side of the road for widened sidewalks, et cetera. But um, if we want to make room for uh, pedestrians uh, and, uh, you know, kind of more vitality or multi-use, we need to think about traffic calming, uh, brick crosswalks, medians, and so on. Uh, so to allow a greater multi-use of uh, traffic uh, would be really to allow, the traffic calming must be step-in-step step with allowing for uh, multi-use and pedestrian accommodations as well as uh, public spaces. Um, that said, um, despite the need for the plan, a plan, I would suggest that there need to be, there can be aesthetic and functional improvements um, ahead of the plan. So one is the crosswalk between the Weathersfield Shopping Center and the, what I call the CVS Plaza. I don't know if anybody's tried that. Uh, I did, I, it was not quite on the order of danger and skill required to scale Yosemite, but you know, it was still a, a challenge to get uh, from the Weathersfield Shopping Center across the crosswalk. There's no place for pedestrians. You go on the other side of the street. There's no. You're either in right next to the to uh, uh, vehicles or you're on grass. There's no sidewalk, so it's really poorly designed for pedestrian use. Um, one thing we another thing we could do is. Um, create greater, better public-private partnerships. For example, mowing and landscaping. I have, no way, I have no idea whether that's a public space that the town takes care of, that little space between the sidewalk and the um, street. Uh, but what I do notice is that some uh, business owners take care of that, it's very neat. Others, you know, the weeds are as tall as corn plants and it looks terrible. 
So there's a lot of inconsistency there. Um, so we could facilitate the mowing. Maybe uh, the town could, you know, have a sign up where you pay a certain amount per month. Maybe we could uh, facilitate hiring a, a particular operator to take care of that kind of thing. Uh, similar with landscaping, planting, and pot potting. Maybe we could kind of develop a, a, a way that uh, an easier way for um, a businesses along the Silestine uh, to facilitate uh, landscaping. Um, there could be some private options, um, say lights along the Weathersfield Shopping Center for, for uh, trees similar to Old Weathersfield or downtown Newington. Um, there could be a public, small public space in front of the CBS Plaza. Um, um, we, we need to confer with the board and developer and its residents. There are more people living here. So let's talk to them. What would they like to see? They live along this highway. Uh, the development of kiosks uh, for community uh, postings and so on. So those are things that we could, small things, small improvements we could make ahead of a plan. So, so I think in closing that it's not, you know, I think Weathersfield, uh, Old Weathersfield is our pride and joy. I mean, it's kind of what we're known for, and we take a great deal of, uh, of uh, pride and, and devote resources to that, but we also need to, you know, be inclusive of our, of our commercial district and to develop um, a multi-use um, space to think um, purposefully about the aesthetics. Um, and I, I want to second um, the comments of Gabe Amika. Um, so I, I think he had uh, a sense of, I said, uh, I, I sensed a sense of urgency uh, in, his, in his comments. I don't want to uh, uh, speak more than my turn, but I, I think perhaps our model would be Glastonbury, uh, what they've done uh, with their, um, which is really just a strip, but what they've done with it has made it, um, you know, beautiful and useful and, um, you know, just for the enjoyment of all, of all citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. um, you've mentioned a, in a couple of spots here on maybe forming um, a, a commission or a group around um, SDH. Um, would you have an interest, and I'm not committing one way or the other, I'm just asking a question, would you be interested in, in potentially forming that group and maybe participating in that group? Yeah, sure, I'd like to. Okay. Uh, and again, I'm not speaking for anybody. It's just I have a question. I just wanted to check to see if that was something you would have an interest in. You know, you talked about resources. Um, I think if we sat around, uh, there's no question that the beautification of the Southstein Highway and the more user friendly that it can be um, um, is just a win win. But you bring up the resources aspect and that's always the that's always at the end of the that's the biggest killer of innovation and ideas is is show me the money. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, I'm not sure whether we're exploring all opportunities that we potentially could have for maybe getting some type of state um, um, money uh, to help improve that. I can't speak to that because I'm not aware of it. Um, but these are things that could be maybe discussed and maybe some rocks can be turned over in that arena. Uh, but there's certainly, there's been a lot of studies of the South Dean Highway. We spent a lot of money uh, on those reports to see what could be done. We know anything can be done if you have the resources and the talent behind it. Um, so from the talent perspective, if you would have an interest in, in maybe um, corralling or participating in um, some type of a commission, again, the, the legality aspects of it or how it's formed is outside of my purview, but I just want to check with you to see if you would be maybe an anchor, if you will, on uh, such a commission and you're saying yes. Yes. Okay, great. I, I, I'd like that. Great. Um, Mr. Tamika, I know you're here representing um, 912 Southstein Highway, um, and you'd also um, had sent some correspondence uh, to Peter. Um, would love to have you uh, share some comments with us if you'd like. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, I, um, Cindy did a, a, a Good job, a great job of prefacing my comments. And I'll just go through it. I, I, um, I purchased uh, the building 912 Silestine Highway in 2006, and I am a resident in Glastonbury. You know, I purchased it as an investment with the thought process of knowing that the Silas, you know, looking at the Silestine Highway, that um, it's drab and it needs a lot of work. And I thought, um, you know, as a, a, a 
sort of investment foresight, thinking that something would occur. And I've been hearing for, for since 2006 that studies have been done, things have been looked at, and resources are, um, you know, in order to do something, you need the resources. And since 2006, it, it, uh, like I said in my uh, letter, it is frustrating to see because I look at towns throughout Glastonbury when I'm traveling, and their major thoroughfares are able to get resources, whether it's Glastonbury, Portland, Chester, New Britain, Shelton, um, West Hartford. I continue to go through towns in, the, in Connecticut where their major thoroughfares have invested in streetscapes and landscapes. And to my knowledge, I really haven't seen anything done since 2006. And I will say that it has in the past lost me tenants and the desirability of whether it's traffic, the aesthetics of it, um, it, it it's lost, uh, you know, I, it, it's, a, it's a hindrance in my marketability of um, leasing space at 912. And then I, I just also would want to say is, is that when you discuss the facade program, I did take advantage of it a couple of years back. It was a great program. And um, I wanted to take care of it again, unless I'm, I, I wanted to take advantage of it again. But unless I'm misunderstanding, it became more complicated and I walked away from the program. And here's the reason why is, is that I was wanting to do something in the building um, this year, and I was looking at maybe doing it in the spring of next year. And I have probably six or seven things that I would have liked to have gotten done. Landscaping, um, putting mylar on the windows, um, painting, redoing some of the gutters, et cetera. Well, that requires me to look at about six or seven different contractors. And if I did that, that would mean I'd have to get um, I, I think that the way it's newly structured, as opposed to in the past, I have to get three bids from each contractor. So if I'm working with five contractors, I now have to get 15 bids. And if I have to go with the lowest bid, sometimes I work with my contractors that I've been with since 2006, and they may not be the lowest, um, they may not be the lowest price. But I deal with the same contractors because what happens at times is, is that if you bring in a new contractor and a mistake is made, the new contractor says, oh, it was the other guy's responsibility. So sometimes I like to keep my existing contractors in place so that I establish a relationship. And then when I'm there, when I need something done, I get it done. So now the facade program has, uh, has become more, unless I'm off base, become more cumbersome to work with and I can't execute it as quickly. And I, so I've, I've you know, I, I don't participate in it from that standpoint. So that's just a, an aside with respect to the facade program. But more importantly is the, um, the Silestein Highway, it, it, you know, Weathersfield is a great town. It does have old Weathersfield, which is beautiful. Um, but the, the you could put as much incentive as you want into um, trying to get developers to build things down the Silestine Highway. And perhaps maybe that's one of the reasons why you need to get incentives, because it's not attractive. And I think it needs to be attractive, and maybe there'd be less incentives required because people would want to be on the Silestine Highway as opposed to... Um, trying to get them incentive wise. So I, I you know, and, and I think that um, timing is more of the essence because there are so many towns um, that are able to either put it together and get the funding. That's it. Uh, well, thank you for your comments. Does everyone, I wanna make sure that, and Pete, you did include, yeah, I see this, Mr. D'Amico's comments along with Cindy's comments. Um, well, um, it, you guys are in unison. Um, I don't know if you guys knew you were calling at the same time, uh, but it's, um, it's, I think it's really important for us to um, listen to one, um, somebody who obviously lives in, in Weathersfield for a long time, you Cindy, and you as a, as a property owner and business owner here in Weathersfield. Um, I, I guess I would pose the same question uh, to you, Gabe. Would you be interested 
again, if we were able to do some type of a, of, of a study group or whatnot and participating in something like that? My, my answer is yes, and I would be more than willing to do it. But I will also turn around and say is, is that this is not my responsibility as the owner. It's the responsibility of the town to make the town more attractive. And, and the fact that it has gone so long, um, I'd be more than willing to do it. And I, and I think it's very important. But I don't, um, it, it's got to be a commitment that this is what the town and um, the, you know, the, and I don't even really know the audience of who's on this call, but um, the decision makers of the town, I would only want to be on the committee if the decision makers and the people on the town really want to get this done. <laughs> I, you know, I'm like everybody else, we're busy, but, um, y you know, I, I think this is, Anybody that I've spoken with over the years says, yes, it's important. We think it's a great idea. A lot of studies have been done in the past. I don't need to be on a committee that just has a study. If somebody has an interest, and this is um, a commitment by the town and by the members that want to do it, yes. But if it's just myself and a few residents to come up with ideas, no. Um, the um, I, I echo uh, what you're saying. Um, I, I've been on those committees before. Um, as I said, and I think if you went to anybody here in town, the biggest issue that we face, obviously, are the our resources um, and having a plan that can support the resources. Um, but having public and private participation on a proposed or potential commission like this. I think it's really important is to get the business side of the community in the equation. And that's why I asked Gabe. Um, yeah, no, no, I'll definitely be on it. But I think the one thing is, is that I, which I get, I don't know any of them. Um, I don't profess to know any of um, how the resources work. It's just like I said, is, and you could sense the frustration in my voice is because when I look at other towns and they're all from varying economic um, levels, you know, like, I, you know, I get it. Glastonbury, they put in two rotaries. They just connected a, um, a sidewalk in a town that I'm in. But I, I, but I see various towns somehow figuring out how to get the resources to figure out their major thoroughfares. You know, and I, and I don't know any of the mechanics of how it works or what, why it works or why it doesn't work. But um, Portland just um, redid all their sidewalks and made the, and is doing a beautification on their main street. You know, so I, I'm more than willing to be on that committee. I just want to, you know, hopefully that there'll be some horsepower on it so that, um, you, you know, that it's a step in the right direction and maybe action is taken from previous, um, uh, from previous uh, uh, committees and studies, or, um, you, you know, th there are people that really are committed to doing this. Great. Um, thank you, Judy. I, I, Judy Keene here for Gabe's purposes. You don't have the camera. Um, I um, agree with Cindy and Gabe. I think that the Silas Dean, and I love that Cindy called it our commercial district because I think we need to get a, a, a label for it. Um, you're right. It needs, it's, I will avoid going along the Silas Dean more than anything because it's so desolate. And um, unless you have a destination there, you're not gonna just drive down the road. Um, but to Gabe's point uh, about joining a, a, a committee, I just wanna use the Weathers Old Weathersfield shopkeepers as an example of Old Weathersfield 20 years ago was in the toilet and there was no reason to go there. Um, the shopkeepers that were there um, became a collaborative and really turned it around, you know, with outside resources as well. But um, because they came together, they started to do holidays on Maine there. They started to do other in, uh, things like the scarecrows. Um, we had 58 scarecrows on Main Street. It was a traffic jam because there was so much appeal to it. So there are things I think can be done on the Silestein Highway. Um, you know, um, I'd be happy to serve on a committee to, to talk about that. 
and I think landscaping is a number one. And maybe it can be a joint partnership between the town and the owners of the properties and the state. It is a state highway. Thank you, Judy. Anybody else have any comment? Uh, I, one, one comment, Mark, uh, it's Tom Carson, Gabe, and I echo Judy, and I echo you, Gabe, and Cindy. Um, it's the reason why I got involved on the EDIC originally is because of the Silenstein Highway. And the one thing I always say, <clears throat> it's become like a mantra of mine, is that the Silenstein Highway is our community's front door. For a, a thousands of travelers, it's the only experience that people have is the Silestine Highway, their experience of Weathersfield. And I want to make a Silestine Highway. I don't want to call it Silestine Boulevard. I don't want to call it Silestine Highway anymore. But I want it to be a street that makes people more curious about our town rather than less curious, because I think it's completely unrepresentative of the rest of our town. And so, and I agree. I mean, I think. I don't know if there's the public will to invest in it. I don't know, I definitely know there's probably not the political will to invest in it, but it is an economic development issue. And it's nice to have a business owner here that can put it in economic terms, sort of where people wanna locate their business and what kind of, you know, what kind of place they wanna be in. Because again, I've gone back to this in the past. We've seen it during the pandemic that 10, 20, 30 years from now, we're going to be more and more about where do you want to live rather than where do you have to live based on where you work and you need to build that community since more and more people are working either out of their homes or closer to their homes than ever before. So I don't know how we get there. I know the only thing I ask is that I hope that Gabe's letter makes it to every town councilman and to every member of planning and zoning and also Cindy's comments as well because I think they all need to hear it. That's it. Great, thank you, Tom. Any other comments? I think, um, um, well, obviously, I think the we're seeing a formation. I'm gonna call on you, Mr. Carson, um, as I have, uh, you know where I'm going, but um, you know, there could be the nucleus here of that organization. Um, and again, I think it's really important that um, it, it not be formed um, unless there is some criteria that gets met prior to getting started, that uh, everybody's time is very busy. Um, uh, are we, I should say we're all busy and don't necessarily have a lot of time. So I go to what Gabe was saying on, on that. And if there is a horse to get on and ride, um, um, we should try to find out uh, for it, uh, find it. Um, uh, so, I think just the nucleus of a group looking at Tom, Judy, Cindy, and Gabe potentially. Um, and uh, I think what we'd like to do is respond back to you guys um, uh, in writing, unless anybody else uh, would like to talk about this at this moment, uh, we could get back um, to you uh, in writing on this. Judy? Can we get copies of the um, previous studies? I mean, I think the last one Gabe said was in 1987 or Cindy said that maybe, but if there's any studies at all that have been done, um, I know there was a beautification committee um, years ago. 2006. Did we have one in the 90s? 2006. No, no, two, 2006, there was a, a, a report and uh, there, was, there was a committee for a couple of years uh, before and after that. And uh, the leadership um, waned a little bit. So, but we can certainly, uh, share all, uh, that with everybody. Were there any before then, Peter? Oh, yes, there was a, uh, the, that's the one you were referring to was uh, 87 before that, I think. Okay. Maybe if we could get copies of those, okay. are they electronic? Uh, the 2006 certainly is, uh, anything before that, um, it can certainly be scanned and made electronic if we, if we can't find the electronic files. I looked at a couple online. Yep. So they're 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 right there with the um, uh, your website. Um, I would I would kind of ask uh, Gabe's question too. If we do form a committee, um, supposing we want to ask, uh, well, what are what are the applicable laws uh, governing or, or traffic requirements governing a state highway? Um, can we rely on town resources 
to you know help us out here and give g help us get answers or um you know if we need further information or i mean i guess i guess maybe in this letter you want to put together or some kind of written okay of this maybe you want to express your level of commitment uh to this endeavor i think from a uh, a staffing perspective i don't want to speak on behalf of of the manager or the mayor but i do know that we're just it's just a fact at this point we are running extremely thin um and i think the timing and when we want to get this started would be important and that's why i really like to confer with other people to find out because i agree with you cindy if if you're going to the well and there's no water to get it can be frustrating but so and i am an under promise over deliver personality uh so um and in, in this case i think it would serve well um let's talk about what we can't legitimately can do what we legitimately have the resources for what we legitimately have staffing for um and those are the things that i want really want to turn rocks over on those things and and put that down in writing and again i'm not committing or not committing to uh, forming this group i'm just trying to find out who potentially might be interested if this is something that we want to put together hey mark yeah, I, I just want to I, I just want to interrupt a little bit on this, and I, I would really be interested in the committee, and this is Gabe, but I will say this is, is that every town in Connecticut has, has concerns with limited resources and limited availability, and people are stretched thin. But for some reason, most towns are able to figure out in the last 15 years how to get their major thoroughfare um, had some sort of dollars spent to get it improved. You know, and I just, um, I, and I, I guess what I go back to is, is that when this is, this is a, a situation where no matter where you drive in Connecticut, um, for the most part, their major thoroughfares have been touched, at least either through landscaping, through streetscapes, through, scobble, through cobblestones, at least once in the last 10 years. So I, I know where I, I understand and I respect the fact that um, th the resources are stretched in, but that's true with all towns and somehow they figure out how to get it done. So Gabe, I'm, uh, it's Gary Evans. I'm, I'm, I'm not one to usually engage in this, but respectfully, I have to suggest that as someone who's worked in multiple communities on this very subject that you're talking about, uh, I do agree yeah. that there's been a lot of movement out there in different communities. The town of Wethersfield has been very successful in getting funds into the town. Um, I do agree that the Silestine Highway uh, needs to absolutely be addressed. Um, but in fairness to the process, the town has also been very successful in bringing funds in to address probably not the Silestine Highway, different uh, nodes within town to get it developed and up to speed, Old Wethersfield being one of them. It's a pretty significant list. Um, I think Peter did send it to you and we can share it, but I, I wanted the rest of the group to hear that as well. Um, it's not so much that we haven't been working on economic development. I do understand the impact and benefit oh, no, of major commercial, at, I, but, but the other component, if I can just finish, and Peter is being very uh, meager, I think is the term I'm, I'm looking for. I don't mean it to be insulting. He's not speaking up, but the reality is he is associated with seven committees like this already. He's my one guy to do it. So I'm not saying no, but as someone who's worked in other communities who've done this, I can say they're better staff than we are to address it. Um, so I, I do wanna be creative in trying to address this, um, but I, I do think in fairness to my staff, I have to come to a defense level of saying, it's not that we don't care. It's, it's, it's not that we um, don't wanna see the change. It's not that we don't understand the development component to it because it is our ta commercial tax corridor, major commercial tax corridor. We have been working on many parts and maybe it's just time, Silas Dean, is that, is that highlight, right? Um, it's time to dust off the old studies and, um, and start with a plan to go after funding. So that is our next one. So I just, I had to put it out there. Um, I don't want you guys to think that we're we're trying to dodge work or or not do the work associated with it um, but as you know timing is everything i fully understand and, and i didn't all i'm just saying is is that um it 
this is it's it's the Silasteen Highway. It's not like a, a a road, and there are a lot of developments, and there are a lot of good things that are occurring. Um, I'm just saying is that it, with this one, it is sort of the um, you know when I look at it, it, it it's the lifeline uh, from an outsider looking in. Um, it's it's sort of the lifeline of uh, Weathersfield when people think of Weathersfield, I think they think of two things. They think of the Silasteen Highway and they think of old Weathersfield. And unfortunately, more people go down the Silasteen Highway than in old Weathersfield. So there are a lot of great things occurring um, and they are happening. I just saying is, is that um, for, for the town of Weathersfield, I think that this, it, it should be a high priority, but if it's not, it's not. That's just my thought. That's all. And Mark, uh, Tony and I'm sorry, Tony, if I may, just just to comment, I and okay. don't don't take away from don't uh, I don't want you to misunderstand my statement. I I agree. This is a I mean we're twenty two thousand traffic counts twenty two thousand hits per day plus or minus. Um, I I do agree is it it needs to be addressed. I'm not discounting anything you or Cindy had mentioned. Um, I I just I wanted to put that out there. Okay, that's fine. Well said. Mark, Tony Martino for Gabe and Cindy's benefit. Uh, before we look at starting a new committee on this, uh, and because you know you got the implications of planning and zoning rules and everything else, and we already do have one group, namely Design Review Committee, who knows the ins and outs of the rules and everything. Maybe the best bet, uh, Gary, is to task them with looking at the current plan and the comments that are in these memos, and maybe they can look to see what could be done uniformly to maybe to go out for a grant to do sections of this, you know, to improve the Silasteen Highway so we can use an existing group and stay within, you know, the requirements and then future redevelopment would take care of itself. Just a thought. Hi, I'm sorry, what was the name of the group? The Design Review Committee that reviews stuff before it goes to P and Z. Maybe that could be added to the scope of work to just, you know, look at the plan to, and look at these comments to see if there's anything that we could take forward and, you know, go looking for a grant that, you know, P and Z would bless to, you know, this way you'd have the experts working on it instead of forming a new group that's got to start from scratch to figure everything out. My, my only thought is I, I, I have a, I have a, a business owner that's very much, much interested yeah. in participating. And I really do yeah. like the fact that. Well, he that... can work with them. I'm just saying, you know, I think instead of, a brand new group, use that group and have them, you know, augment it as an auxiliary person. Could, could we be part of that? Yeah. Uh, be part of or sort of advisory to the design review committee and form a committee that is sort of has a kind of a public a face and uh, can kind of take in these um, comments from, from citizens and businesses. So yeah, I think what we, we could. need to do. To address your address you directly, Cindy, um, I think this is what we want to be thoughtful on, um, and and let's sit back and and get together and talk with some of the principals here in town about and including Tony um, and figure out where we could potentially plug this in and make it work. I don't get involved in anything unless I know I can actually have an effective change and that there's an avenue for me to do that as well. So that's really what I think um, we'd like to do is, is to sit back and take a good look. The good news is we've already spent money. We have plans from, from mid 2000s to look at. So that part is done. Um, again, I, I'd like to, to table this for now um, and get together with Gary and Pete and Tony and others uh, and figure out how this might work um, uh, and what cogs we need to start to turn to make it work. Uh, if that would be all right with you uh, and with Gabe. Yeah, and I would just like to echo, uh, I think what Gabe was saying, and I think what I'm hearing is, it, I think it's time. I think uh, it's, uh, we've done a lot uh, in terms of business re development, redevelopment, facade improvement along the Silas Dean, but that is a public face of our community. And, um, and what most visitors see, and I think it's time to yep. uh, make an the improvement. The good news here is that there's no pushback. Um, it's just, how do we do it? Um, so that's, that's the good news. Um, so if I could, we could table this discussion for now and move. Yes, Judy. I was just going to say, this may be a perfect opportunity to use the steep grant, the steep money. 
um, to improve for facade improvements along the Celestine Highway, even if it's just landscaping or whatever, any of the items that are in the earlier report, the suggestions, maybe those could be implemented fairly soon to use that money. Um, that's one thing that we can take a look into, but we need to figure out which strings are attached to the money and where it can be used. Um, uh, but again, that's, I, I don't have all the facts on that and I don't want to speak to it until uh, we, we get them, but I take your point. Any other questions or comments? Cindy and Gabe, thank you for uh, investing some time with us today and, and for your notes. Uh, and we look forward to another conversation. Great, thank you for the opportunity. You got it. Um, Mr. Manager, would you like to report? I report that I'm losing my mind. Um, yes. We, so I, uh, I apologize. I've kind of been in and out. There's been a couple of interesting things all happening at the same time uh, that are outside of control. This was just kind of the nature of the job, but I, I did have to be distracted. So I got to find my notes. Um, uh, quick report. The, the Earlier today, I had a meeting with um, my emergency operations center task force about COVID. Um, we are still, for those of you who haven't seen my monthly uh, or my weekly manager's report, um, our numbers have been steadily going up. The state has classified us as being red. Um, red basically means that um, somebody or a municipality has more than 15 cases per, uh, 15 positive daily cases of COVID uh, over a row rolling 50 um, two week period. Um, and they do it per 100, sorry, 15 cases per 100,000 over two week period. So they basically establish this level where you take the number of average cases per day over 14 days, divided by your population, multiply by 100,000. Uh, for us, it comes to uh, just slightly over 15. Um, over the weekend, we had 30 cases on their own. Um, if I look at the numbers from last week to this week, we went up 57 cases, which we've been averaging um, about 10 a week. In one week, we went up 57. The week before that, we went up 37. The week before that, we went up 20. So if you look at that pattern, um, we're heading in a negative direction. Um, we are good news. Uh, I don't want to call it good news because it is still tragic, but our death, um, total death since March is 13. Um, and if you look at surrounding communities, they are not as lucky um, with keeping those numbers down. Granted, that is part of the, um, you know, talk about commercial. Um, there are uh, some senior housing um, and nursing homes that obviously drive those numbers up in other places. Um, but on a daily basis, sometimes multiple times a day, the school is giving me a report saying uh, they're either um, the number of cases that they're having are causing um, or quarantines are causing schools to go hybrid, uh, uh, sorry, fully remote uh, for temporary periods of time. Uh, currently there's 30 positive cases within the school, 24 are students, five are teachers. Um, as Michael Emmett was giving me that report at 11 o'clock this morning, he came in and said, oh, never mind, those numbers are changing. We have more today. I'll give you an official later. Um, there's 260 total students quarantines, 47 are, uh, I'm sorry, 260 students across the district are in quarantine, 47 are teach, 40, an additional 47 teachers. Um, so the, the question of whether or not COVID has come to town is it's here. Um, and we need to take particular precautions, not only in the public, but also here within town hall and town buildings. Um, right now, um, we're starting to scale back. I haven't officially closed any additional buildings, um, but we may be heading in that way. Um, I would assume that within the next week, my staff here is going to go on a rotation schedule for those who can work from home. We're gonna follow state guidance um, in terms of going a little bit lighter within the building uh, for health and safety issues for both the employees, uh, the residents and to sustain operations um, during that period of time. Because if they go out, they're not working and I don't have, we can't run effective government. Um, I will say I did put a travel policy in place for town staff. So um, people are staying 
essentially staying local or they're required to quarantine and or work from home and or take a test uh, to come back, but the testing is not proving to be as accurate as hoped, uh, although it has gotten better. So that's kind of the, the bleak outlook related to COVID, um, but it, we are heading in a very aggressive manner as we go into the winter months and the holiday season uh, in terms of the level. Um, again, things, I apologize, I can't remember my report. Um, Brainerd, Brainerd Airport Advisory Committee met last month. Um, for those of you who don't know, the uh, Brainerd Airport it has gotten uh, through several different stages to address some of the trees and tree line um, over in the, I guess we'll call it the North Meadows, um, uh, close to the Hartford line near MDC um, into the cove. There's a there's probably about 50 or 60 acres of trees that they're talking about potentially cutting back, cutting down, deforesting. Um, they do have to go through a process with DEEP to get permission and approval to do that. And they're going through that process now. The assumption in my very quick conversation with DEEP as well as my longer conversation with Brainerd Airport is that that still has to go through some public participation process. Um, but it has been approved through the federal government. Step one has been approved. They have to go through, um, uh, because they are using federal funds to do it, they have to go through an environmental assessment component, um, which was already completed about two years ago, if I remember correctly. This is the next phase to get permitting. Um, so I alert you to that because that has a, an impact on everything in the community. Uh, other things, uh, I've been part of a municipal solid waste task force that's statewide being done through DEEP to look at how our trash is done throughout the state. Um, right now, uh, most of our landfills are somewhere between 80 to 85% at capacity. Um, and the overall cost to communities that participate and especially with MIRA uh, has gone up an exorbitant amount. And because of the aging infrastructure of the near a facility here in Hartford. Um, they're looking at raising the rates even more to help offset the cost or to fund the cost of improving um, the, that facility. I don't believe the improvements are gonna get approved at the state level uh, for any bond funding. So we're looking at alternates. We're looking at ways to keep the cost downs for the community, which has a direct impact to obviously commercial development as well. It's just part of your overhead and operating costs if you come to this community how you uh, handle traf, trash. So not only does this impact residents, but it also impacts um, the businesses as well. Um, the town has also recently approved uh, or authorized me to um, uh, try to negotiate lower energy rates for the street lights as well as municipal building, buildings. So hopefully we'll have some significant cost savings. I'm still waiting for some of that resource to um, there's a process um, uh, to go through, to go out to bid, to actually uh, evaluate the costs and we're, we're midway through um, getting those numbers. Um, more positive side, we had an election on Tuesday. I call that positive. Um, that's not to pick sides over a result, but that's to talk about the level of engagement that the nation had in this election, as well as here locally, we had about an 85% turnout uh, for voting. Um, and regardless of which side you were on or how many sides you were on, um, the fact that people uh, across the country felt exercise their right to vote, I think is an important one. And so um, I congratulate all those uh, who came out to exercise that right. Um, and I really want to kind of compliment the staff here that had to handle um, a change in how we operated simply so that we could handle about 200 uh, election day uh, registrations, people actually coming into the building to register to vote for their first time, as well as uh, absentee ballots. There were more than 6,000, 64, 6,600 absentee ballots that were done. Um, I don't think we've ever had more than 2,000. I think even that might be a stretch. Um, so it was, uh, it was an amazing uh, activity that took place uh, here within town hall on that election day. And thanks to the staff and the volunteers. Uh, the town's been participating in a social justice coalition. We've had three meetings total. The first two were introductory meetings. At those two introductory meetings, there were more than 150 people present on a Zoom call. 
um, the third meeting, which started to get into the um, an actual more of the dialogue, less of an overview and more of a dialogue and engagement with uh, residents had a little more than 50 people participating, 56 people participating, which was uh, more than we anticipated and probably um, uh, kind of a good show of the interest uh, as a whole. Um, we, there is another one coming up on November 30th uh, at 5.30. Uh, the topic will continue again. It's a focus on equity, um, inequality, um, reviewing policies uh, within the town um, may come in the future. We, is, we start right now with the coalition of the entire, anyone who wants to participate, residents or businesses can participate in the dialogue. Um, and there's a lot of educational component and understanding. Um, and then from there, the group will move to smaller subcommittees to focus in on specific topics topical information um, to come up with uh, some outcomes. It's a results-based results accountability process starting with the end in mind and working backwards um, to resolve and discuss issues and concerns of the greater community level. Uh, just as a reminder, there is a food drive taking place at DeSopo this weekend from nine to noon. Um, and there's several holiday programs uh, just find my notes on this. So the town, uh, due to COVID, typically this type of year, we do a Thanksgiving uh, drive as well as something going into the holidays, uh, a holiday program, um, holiday meal program, youth holiday gift program. Because of COVID, we're not asking for donations of, we continue to ask for donations of food as a whole for the food pantry, but in terms of the Thanksgiving day, event because we don't we can't bring in volunteers um, when we don't have the staffing unto itself to put together these meal packages for Thanksgiving and coordinate the turkey drive um, specifically in town hall we're asking for people to consider monetary donations um, th those donations can be done online through rec track we're going through the parks and recreation webpage um, as well as checks made out to the social news services um, but in all cases, we're trying to lessen exposure of the individuals coming in to donate and the individuals that we're trying to help. Um, in exchange, we're gonna provide gift cards. Gift cards will range between 25 and $50, depending upon how many people are in the household. Um, and uh, it would be to specific stores for retail or grocery um, designated specifically for shopping um, related to it. So that's kind of my quick, um, Update, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Lots taken place in the last 30 days. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, Town Council Liaison Report. I don't know if Patrick had to split. Um, I think he did. Uh, this meeting I know is going a bit long. Um, anybody else uh, filling in for Town Council Liaison Report or anything to add in that category? Patrick said that uh, Mike, if there was anything up, he texted me and said, he has another he has another zoom at 1 30. Mm -hmm. well, he wanted to make sure that he knew that a couple of times um he has been on he was sitting next to me that he got reported that he wasn't here so this time he had to leave for another zoom but he wanted to make sure i brought that up understood um mr mayor you're with us did you want to share uh, some uh anything with us uh, <laughs> gary did a uh a very good job of, um, you know, briefing you all on the developments over the last 30 years. Um, I, I don't have really much else to add from what he had said. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in the beginning, I did talk just briefly to Tony about the event yesterday. Uh, despite everything that is going on, we still honor uh, our residents. And yesterday being uh, Veterans Day, we held an outdoor ceremony at the high school where um, a number of folks in their family came to honor uh, our town's veterans. It was a, a great um, ceremony and uh, I appreciated the opportunity to speak on behalf of the town. Uh, the Veterans Committee uh, invited me to speak and uh, for that I was honored. Town should be uh, honored as well that things continue to move forward as uh, as COVID presents itself. Town Hall is open but by appointment only as, as Gary said. Um, town buildings as well. Staff are still working uh, every day. 
to fulfill the needs of the residents. So um, things are, are staying as normal as possible given the uh, current situation. Um, we typically received, and this was the last two weeks, every Thursday evening or early evening, we would get an update from the state on where we are. I got an email today from the Department of Public Health that they will not be doing the you know, breakdown of which towns are orange or which towns are red. Um, it's safe to assume that pretty much every town is in either an orange or red category right now. So um, it's gonna be a, a bi-weekly call that all municipalities get on with the governor's office. The next call will be on the 18th uh, at five o'clock. I will be on that call and I'll get an update on where we are um, with regard to our metrics and, and how we're doing uh, to, uh, to stem any uh, increases. Um, but, you know, I listen out every day as everybody else does on, on kind of a status of where the state is and uh, where we are. I know Peter and Gary are keeping a close eye on sector rules and on um, phase one, two, three, now back to phase 2.1 and how that affects uh, residents and businesses alike here in town. So that's kind of just a little wrap up that I, I can follow up with uh, Gary's uh, um, very thorough report. So not much else to add to what he said. Great, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, PNZ, I don't think we filled that slot yet. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. George Oikel will be joining uh, us at future meetings. Oh, beautiful. Great. That'll be, um, that'll be entertaining. He's an ent entertaining guy. Um, Heritage uh, Tourism, Ms. Judy? You're on mute, Ms. Judy. Um, not much going to report, um, just that Slipaway Tours was the winner of the uh, Tourism Award this year, and hopefully they are going to do one of the videos. Um, the lantern, from the Historical uh, Society, the Lantern Light Tours are going on, and the History Channel um, just wrapped up their uh, filming for... Uh, something food. about food yeah oh, build yeah. america or something yeah right right and we still don't know if it's going to be the red onion or not um that's about it uh, we're still waiting to hear definitely about a heritage committee membership but we just assume we're all going to continue to be on the committee great the only, uh, the only one thing to add is the uh I attended a couple of the recent shopkeepers meetings. A holidays on Maine is obviously not going to be held this this year. However, the shopkeepers are considering um, coordinating uh, late night hours every Thursday in uh, December uh, to at least um, let residents know and try and attract them to support the shopkeepers businesses on Main Street. So they're working out the details on that as we speak. And uh, we'll be putting out some sort of uh, details on that uh, probably in the next week or two. Great. Anything else, Jude? Uh, just from the Keene Foundation, we are going to be doing the Luminaria this year. And I think people will really be looking forward to that because it's the only event that we're able to have. And I think it'll brighten our landscape. Um, amen. Uh, thank you. Um, Chamber, I think Deb uh, had mentioned that she had a, another event um, uh, with the Chamber, so she's not with us. Um, I have nothing to report. Um, subcommittee reports, uh, marketing communications and financial strategies. Pete, I know you did mention to look at the tax incentives at one point. We probably should get that on the calendar um, whenever you, whenever we got a free time. Um, anything on marketing communications? I think um, the only thing would be, Pete, is um, if we can maybe get a, uh, a bullet point or a mention of the facade uh, program into the letter that we were gonna put out, I think that would maybe potentially help us. Gary, I don't know if you were here at the time, but we were trying to figure out whether or not, because our steep grant money um, in the past to fund the facade improvement program has been 200,000, 250,000, um, that is there a potential way to reallocate the money for 1,000 Salestein into our steep, uh, into our facade improvement program, which has not been funded um, 
uh, to this point. So we are planning on adding um, that to our letter out to the business owners to show that we are promoting the facade improvement program. Um, so just an idea um, as a potential reuse as we throw spaghetti against the wall to a degree um, at this point. You look like you want to comment or you... Um, Hey. Anything, yeah, anything. I was listening intently. Um, okay. I love yeah, it. I mean, I, here, I, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to present our case to OPM. That could be a viable um, presentation or, you know, a viable use of the funds. We're, um, I guess, marketing it between now and then, right? So the double edged sword, you market it. It'd be good to have a list to say we have 15 people who want to use it. Um, because then the state would feel confident that we were going to spend down the money. Um, on the other hand, if you market it and then they take away the money, people are going to be waiting for their waiting for the money. So um, I won't. I wouldn't take anything off the table. I'll throw that spaghetti on the wall with you. Um, but I prefer a little sauce. So. Um, the, uh, yep, you are a sauce pro, uh, sauce provider. Appreciate yep. that. Um, I think the the. Um, um, the, the case that we could make, and I'll just hit this is the last point I'll make on it so we can wrap up, is that all the money that they've given to us, steep, um, steep grants, we have used, and we didn't have businesses that were lined up to use the money. We had the money available for businesses when they had the need. So we don't necessarily, so we were just following the guidelines, and we've used all that money that they've given us to really good result. Um, okay. Okay. Um, uh, minutes, you guys um, uh, have a moment to look at the minutes. When anybody is so moved that they'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Uh, we have a second. All right, Judy, thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, great. Um, our next meeting is November 12th. December uh, 10th. <laughs> December 10th. Uh huh? There's a typo. There's a typo there. Should be December 10th. Um, oh yes, thank you. What month is this? I still think it's March. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, uh, feel again, like thank, thank you for uh, to Cindy and Gabe. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. second. Yes, sir. All those in favor, turn your computers off. Bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.